Hey there, uh, this is Gene with the Fastway 10 customer care team. Uh, and in this video, I'm gonna be doing sort of a short overview for our brand new dispatching feature for the Fastway 10 web portal. Um, we also have a new in-cab dispatch app for mobile, uh, which is designed to work alongside dispatching for web. But just for this overview, um, I will only be focusing on the web module, the, the web side of dispatching. Uh, and I'll give you kind of a quick start guide to help you get set up with just your first few dispatches. Okay, let's just jump right in here. Um, so I'm currently logged into the Fastway 10 web portal. We're here on the web portal dashboard uh, with an admin login. All right, now when you first add dispatching to your Fastway subscription, uh, you're gonna see it as a new menu item here at the top of your web portal. This is your dispatching menu. Now in this video, because we're only going over the web portion of dispatching, we're really gonna focus on the top two options in this menu. Uh, the live tracking and the tracking query that you see here, uh, these are driven by the GPS tracking capabilities that come with that in-cab mobile app that we spoke about. Uh, so we're not going to be going over these so much in this video. Uh, we may mention them a few times, and that's about it. So we're just going to be focusing on getting your dispatching set up for web. Now, before you can actually begin dispatching, we're going to need to establish which trucks and haulers you want to enable dispatching for. All right, so we're going to start by going to our haulers here. Um, if we don't have any trucks or haulers enabled, then those won't appear as available when you're when you're setting them up on dispatches. So it's important that the first step we take is to go in and enable at least one hauler so that we can then enable one or more trucks under that hauler for dispatching. So here I've just gone to our haulers list. I'll just scroll down a little bit. Um, let's grab this Hedgeland hauling hauler and we'll just edit that hauler here. And you'll see at the bottom of, of your editing box here, this enable dispatching checkbox. All you've got to do is just check that and click update and now this hauler is available for dispatching. You'll only need to do this once for any haulers whose uh, trucks you would like to set up for dispatching. And then once you've got a hauler enabled, you can go in and enable truck by truck, you know, any, any trucks that, that you would like to, to do for dispatching here. So I'm just going to narrow these down a little bit and grab only the trucks for hedge here. So I'm going to filter that out here. And let's just do this uh, hedge 005 truck. So I'm going to edit this truck, and it's the same thing. You'll, you'll see a little enable dispatching box, and we're just going to check that. Now, uh, with, with dispatching for web, you also have the option to have uh, SMS text messages that you can send to your drivers. Uh, this is another add-on that you can add on to your Fastway 10 subscription. So if you're going to be using the SMS text alerts, what you'll want to do is uh, for this particular truck, you're going to want to also check that bo box, and you're going to put in their mobile number. And this is the number that those uh, SMS text messages are going to be sent to. So then you'll just click the update button and you're done. And this truck is now ready to be added to a dispatch. Before we leave the topic of these SMS text message alerts for the time being, um, I'd like to go over uh, one other thing here that, that can be really helpful. Sometimes we have a scenario where you might have multiple drivers for one truck. Um, and so when you establish this uh, SMS uh, mobile phone number here at the, at the truck level, uh, that can be a little unhelpful if you have tons of different drivers that drive one truck and they all have different mobile phones. Um, so what we've done is under dispatching, I'll just pop this open in a new tab uh, to make it easy on us. Under dispatching, uh, we've got a little driver library uh, that you can build here. And you can build as many driver profiles as you want. Um, and as an example, we'll just grab a mean gene and look at his information here. Um, and it's just some basic information, driver name. Uh, but this is also where you can establish a uh, SMS mobile number. Uh, you can also put in their, their email address and, and some other info and, and click update to save these drivers. And all you've got to do is when we go back to the truck list, um, if you edit a truck, uh, rather than establishing a, a hard-coded SMS number here, um, that, that, that doesn't change unless you literally go in and type it in number by number. You can instead edit this truck uh, and then just click this button here, all right, next to driver name right here. And that's going to open up your driver library uh, with all of your different driver profiles. And so we'll just grab Mean Gene here, click choose, and automatically that loaded in his email address and his phone number here, all right. So let's say today's Wednesday and Mean Gene doesn't drive on Wednesday. We've got a different guy. Well, it's as simple as uh, editing this truck and then clicking that button. And let's grab, say, Jim Hedgeland to drive for Hedgeland haulers today. Um, click choose. And now we've got Jim's information in here instead. Uh, so what this does is it, it tells the, the program where to send these text messages if you were to send out alerts on this particular dispatch that this truck is assigned to. Um, and those alerts are going to look at whatever's in this box. 
So using this button here, you can uh, have multiple drivers established and quickly uh, load them into a truck, uh, which will change this number here and tell the program where to send those alerts. Uh, and then when done, you'll just click update. And now this truck is, is ready to, to go into dispatching. So let's go ahead and set up our first dispatch. We're going to go up to the top of the screen and click dispatching here. And we're just going to click the new dispatch button. So the first step to uh, setting up your dispatch is, is we've got to uh, set up the order and the product that the dispatch is going to be run for. All right, so we're going to choose our region. And uh, in my case, I know the order number is 117, so I'm just going to put that in and click enter. Um, but you can also search for the order number via this drop down menu. Um, or if you have a massive drop down list that's really difficult uh, for you to navigate, uh, you can click this little search button here. Uh, and you can do a more complex search for the order by typing in either part of the customer name, the description, um, and clicking search and, and selecting the order here. So as an example, I'll go ahead and put in 117, click search. I'll select that and then click the select button. And that'll also load the order into the field. All right, so let's go ahead and choose our product. I'm going to do quarter inch pea gravel. Um, and now we're going to set up the, the parameters for the dispatch itself. Okay. Now every dispatch has a duration. Uh, in most cases, you'll probably just run a, a one day dispatch, um, but you can also choose to run a dispatch that lasts for a certain number of hours. We could say that, you know, that these loads or units need to be delivered over a six hour period on this day, um, or you can do multi-day. And in that case, you'll need to actually indicate what the date range is for those days. Um, so we could say that our dispatch is going to begin on Friday, April 12th. And it's going to end sometime next week. Uh, we'll say Tuesday, April 16th. And then we're going to indicate what quantity we want to do this dispatch for. Now, units is going to refer to, typically it's the tonnage um, <clears throat> for a product, but units actually refers to whatever unit type you have set up on a product. So it may be by the each, um, it may be gallons, uh, et cetera. Um, in my case, I'm actually going to just do by the load. So we're going to deliver six loads uh, during this duration of, of this many days over, over the next week. This uh, ticket type field, you can pretty much ignore this field if you're using dispatch for web only. Um, on our, uh, our in-cab mobile app that we discussed earlier, we have the ability to create tickets, uh, receive tickets. Um, we can keep up with load counts there. Um, we can do proof of delivery, et cetera. Um, if you don't have the app, you can completely ignore this field um, as the, the web only module is not going to take it into account. So we won't be going over this, this field so much in, in this video. We're going to pretty much skip over it. All right, so for status, uh, this is an ongoing dispatch that we're beginning. Um, so we're going to uh, set this to open. We can also put the status to hold, uh, say if we wanted to get the dispatch set up, but we're not actually ready to run it yet. Maybe want to, we want to get approval on the dispatch or something like that. So you can set it up as a hold and save it that way. We're going to actually run the dispatch, so I'm going to set it to open. And then this info box, this is kind of nifty. Um, we've got a, the, the SMS text alerts. If you have a, certain instructions in this info box, for example, deliver by 10 a.m., all right, and then we'll go ahead and uh, save the dispatch. What happens is once you save a dispatch, you can add trucks to it. So we'll go grab that hedge truck here, and we'll just add him to this dispatch. So when we save and close this dispatch, the dispatching module is going to notify him that he's been added to a dispatch, and it will include any information that you put in this field, if any. This is an optional field, so you can leave it blank. Um, but if you do include a little note um, to, to start your dispatches by 10 a.m., etc., cetera, um, when he gets a little text message notification, that's going to go out right now. So his, his phone just, just beeped and told him, hey, you've been added to this dispatch, and you need to start your deliveries by 10 a.m. So before I leave the um, edit dispatch screen, I'm, I'm going to jump back into this dispatch. I'm going to go to actions, edit. I'm just going to go over a couple more things on this screen here. Um, you've got two tables up top here, uh, requested haulers and requested trucks. All right, both of these tables are optional, um, but it might be useful for your operations. If, if you've got somebody that uh, maybe they don't establish the actual uh, trucks on the dispatch, but they can just request, you know, they can create dispatches and just request how many uh, trucks and, and what kinds of trucks they need for the dispatch. They can use these tables to cue your uh, dispatch operator, your, your dispatch manager uh, to go in and, and add those trucks later on. So let's click add here and let's say, hey, we know that we want 
four trucks from this Hedgeland hauling hauler. So you can say we've requested four. Uh, you can also say that, hey, two have committed. So we only we only need a two more to to meet the four, and one has actually already been assigned. All right, this assigned box here, you you won't actually fill that out. The program just looks at at how many uh, trucks down here have already been assigned to the dispatch. So, if there were two trucks here, that that number would read a two. You can you can have as many um, haulers and trucks in this list as you'd like. Uh, there there's no real limit, um, and then you can also request certain types of trucks. Now, when we refer to truck type, let me pop this open in, in a new tab. If I go to our truck list here, that's trucks, trucks. All right. And uh, let's look at let's look at that same head 005. All right. We'll edit that. Uh, you can actually establish a, that, a, that a truck is a certain type of truck. So, for example, uh, maybe quad axle, tandem, triaxle, et cetera. Um, so here we've got a head 005 as a tandem truck. All right. So what happens is you can you can go in here and establish like, hey, we need two tandem trucks, all right, out of the four. And you could say, and we need, you know, a couple of quad axles too out of the four. And if you look at, at this list now, uh, you'll see that there's a little one in the assigned. That's because in there, in the hedge 005 truck profile, um, this truck has, has been established as a tandem truck. So the system knows that, hey, one tandem truck has already been assigned to the dispatch. So we, we need one more tandem and we need two, uh, two quad axles. The last thing I'd like to go over here is, is the, the note option here. So right now, uh, where it says uh, has notes, you'll see a no. That's because there haven't been any notes established on this dispatch. And to add a note, you just click that view edit button and you can click the add button here. Now, notes can be regarding a different subject matter. So you can write a note that's specifically regarding the dispatch itself. You can write a note that's regarding the hauler or haulers on the dispatch. You can choose a certain hauler. And the same with trucks. You could, you could make a note about a certain truck. Um, and then once we've uh, established what it's regarding, you can actually sort these these columns. So when you have lots of different trucks, haulers, or or notes about the dispatch itself, um, you can you can sort those columns to to show those different notes. All right. So let me go back and edit this note. So I'm just going to write test note here. All right. And then once the note has been added, click the checkbox to save it in here. You can see who entered the note. So my uh, my admin login for the web portal uh, has the first name Gene on it. So that's what you're seeing here, entered by Gene on, on this date. And again, all these columns are, are sortable. Okay. And then once you've got notes in here, you'll see that has notes has been changed to yes. So that's pretty much it for the uh, edit dispatch screen. So I'm going to click save and close here. And we're going to take a look at the dispatching whiteboard. Now, if you've uh, established a number of dispatches over a period of time, but you're not seeing all of them on your dispatching whiteboard, um, just be sure to check out these uh, parameters up, up top. Um, so the dispatching whiteboard, when you first land on it, it always defaults to today's date only and the status is, is active. OK, so let's uh, let's pull that date back for, for uh, back to a week or two um, so that we can see more dispatches. And let's also change the status to all and click refresh. So now we're seeing a number of, of different colors here, and we're just going to kind of go over what each of these, these colors mean. Um, each color uh, refers to a, a status. Uh, so if we look only at the active status, all right, which that's the status that is default for the whiteboard, so you'll see active dispatches first. Active refers uh, to dispatches that are both open or on hold, okay? An open dispatch is green. Open dispatches are happening right now. There are loads, you know, actively being delivered on this dispatch. It's open. All right. Now hold is blue and hold, putting a dispatch on hold is kind of like uh, hitting the pause button. All right. When a dispatch is placed on hold, the trucks are not actively running loads for the dispatch, but they will, you know, resume at some point. All right. So the dispatches on hold are blue. And then we have closed dispatches. This means that the dispatch is complete. Okay. No more loads will be run. Um, and those closed dispatches are gray. All right. So again, you know, active, this takes into account both, both open dispatches and dispatches on hold. It's basically anything that's not closed. All right. So if you want to see, you know, all of your dispatches, just make sure you have status to all. And you definitely want to crawl that date back a little bit uh, so you can check out a little bit more what's going on on your dispatching whiteboard. You can also view your dispatches by the order number. Uh, in a, in a table here, and you can edit those dispatches by the order. And you can also view your dispatches by truck. 
Okay, so you can you can go to a certain truck and you can see how many dispatches those were on, and you can even quick add them to other dispatches. And for just our, our final lesson on, on dispatching uh, for web, um, we're going to take a look back at the dispatch we've already established, and we're going to check out this actions menu. All right, now we've already been over the edit portion of the menu. This is what takes you to, to the edit dispatching screen, okay? Um, but we can also uh, send out alerts, uh, live text message alerts to our drivers on the dispatch. Um, now this is pretty cool. Um, and to use this, you're gonna need to have uh, the dispatching SMS text alerts added to your Fastway 10 subscription, okay? But if you've got alerts enabled on those truck profiles and you've got their, their mobile numbers set up and everything, uh, you can send out a, a mass message to all of the, the trucks that are that are assigned to that dispatch at once okay so for example if there's a certain road uh, that they need to avoid uh, we could say uh, you know avoid highway 21 due to flooding okay uh, we can click okay and as soon as we click okay that's going to send out a live uh, text message to all you know uh, one or two or seven or 18 trucks that are established on this dispatch um, so the next thing on the actions menu is info. Um, this is just an overview of what's going on with your dispatch production wise. Um, so you'll see the number of loads that have been run on it, the number of units, et cetera. Now we've got zeros here because, you know, I just established this dispatch for this video. So we haven't actually run loads on it. Uh, but normally you would see the number of, of loads and, and units run on a dispatch so far. Uh, another little perk is if, if you happen to have the in-cab mobile app um, added to your subscription, and if you've got that app established in, in your trucks that you're using for dispatching, you'll see some additional information here uh, because that app will actually track, you know, it, it does the GPS tracking, it does time tracking. So you'll get a little more info here, such as uh, the number of miles that have been traveled on the dispatch, uh, the number of minutes uh, that, that have been spent on the dispatch, et cetera. And then the last thing we'll look at here is the route. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. This is where you can actually see, you know, where the product's being picked up and where it's going, okay? Um, so the pickup uh, point, this is going to be your plant um, or your pit, et cetera. Um, and this is established uh, at the location level. Um, so this is under resources locations, all right? So if your, uh, your pit location is here, I'm going to pop this open in a new tab, all right? We were to edit a location. Uh, you'll see the the information for you know exactly the the address and the, the latitude longitude for that pit. So that's where the map is uh, getting that from. All right, so let me jump back here. All right, and then the other thing we can see on this map is where the product is going. Uh, this is where it's supposed to be delivered. This is established at the order level. Okay, so if we were to go look at order number one seventeen, So I'll just filter that down here, 117, click edit. We'll see that we've also established latitude, longitude coordinates for where that's going, okay? And you can do that easily. You don't actually have to have these, these coordinates on hand. You can just click map, and then you can click anywhere on the map. So this is the delivery location I had established for this video, all right? But we can also click over here and then just click X, and the, the coordinates will, will change to wherever that is. Uh, click save and close. And so now that is the information that's gonna gonna feed into this this map on the dispatching app. And that's it for uh, the dispatching module for web. Uh, if you're interested in getting Fastway 10 dispatching, uh, you can either click the button that's on this video, or you can go to our website here, tacinsight.com. You can also get here by going to fastway10.com, um, and you can get in touch with us. Either uh, give us a call here, or you can uh, contact us from the website. And just let us know that you're interested in adding dispatching to your Fastway 10 subscription.